taking a peek at the media screen for the Telluride. So this is the only option that you're going to find available for the vehicle. 12.3 inches and it's got some killer functionality. So this is typically going to be the home screen that you're met with when you turn the vehicle on. So we've got our current time, date, whatever station we've got currently playing. And swiping across brings us back to, I would probably say this is the home screen. So let's kind of dive through. But before we do, there's one thing I want to point out. And that's what we've got a series of buttons that are just underneath the screen. And that's going to let us jump into different parts of the screen on top of that. So it is nice that we've got that available as an option. It's more or less just like a hot button press in order to get into certain sub screens. So if you need to hot button press to get into your map, navigation, change out your media, you would have that flexibility rather than kind of moving through the screen and going that way. But let's go through everything. Along the very top, we've got a button there in order to be able to change different user profiles. All we have to do is just go change user. We can choose our language and things like that, or just have it as a guest. Confirm. It's a little craziness there. All right, so we can change our profile very easily, as you saw there. And we can go either user one, two, etc. At the very top, we can go back to our home screen. We've got this little button in order to be able to turn the display off button press to bring it back to life, or we can edit the home icons. And one of the cool things there is that if we wanted to, we could do a press and hold if we wanted to drag it to a different location. And I mean, we can even change it in between different screens as well. So if there are different things that you like to use a little bit more, we can easily adjust this thing out as necessary if we want to. And if you've done a little bit too much, we can reset it to bring it back to our factory default instead. Back here, we've got our display and then our QR code. So all we would do is just scan using our phone in order to launch into our manual as well. And back home again. So time along the very top, we've got our date. And then if we're connected to Kia Connect and if we have our audio on or off. So you can see there, toggle on, toggle off, whatever the case may be. And we've got a series of other buttons here. So you saw there our map or we can push the button down. So hopping into our map, brings us here. We do have the flexibility of adjusting this out. One of the benefits there is that it's more or less like a target. So if you know roughly where you're going, you can just kind of drag and say you want to go there. And we can use that as the destination instead. If you want to, you can save it or edit it as a point of interest icon instead. We can push this little button along the side in order to be able to get to full screen if we want to. But I mean, full screen map, that looks really, really nice. We can move back home go back to our map. We've got our, as you can see there, changing up between different map views. So it's going to be a matter of preference there. Navigation volumes. Do we want to have the voice going, sound effects, and volume priority? So what that means is that as we come up to upcoming turns and things like that, it's going to lower the other volumes so you can hear what's going on there a little bit easier. We can also zoom in and out this way. But as you saw there, so we can also do like an easy pinch to zoom and it's fairly responsive there, which is nice. And even kind of moving this way. We've got our auto zoom setting there as well. We can set its destination as you saw there because we're moving this way. If we want to, we can jump into point of interest icon categories. And I mean, so, so many options there. We can go in out. And if we want to back, oh, back to our map again, we can push the menu button there, look at some nearby info. We can save different things. We can show our traffic if we want to, or toggle the display off and then searching for an address. A few cool things, we can easily start entering in certain things. So Tim Hortons, Starbucks, whatever the case may be, if you're looking for coffee, or you can enter in other things. So if you wanted to find a gas station, you can easily type in an address, or we can also search by GPS coordinates very simply. So let's say if we wanted to go to a Tim Hortons, we've got a series of other options available. So we just select, we can set it as a destination, save it, etc. or find parking. So let's see if we save it as a destination. Okay, so it's letting us know a few different routes that are available in order to get to where we want to go. We can also add in a waypoint. So if we want to, we can add it in between there and we hit add waypoint, we can search for different things. So if you need to stop at multiple locations, that's where we're going. We want to add a waypoint in very simply or we just start guidance. The highlighted route. And you can the see there. Guidance will start. Perfect. And along the very bottom, we've got a few different options here. So we can see we're gonna, what time we're going to arrive at or how much time we have remaining. So it's a matter of preference there. And then simply close out. And then we can cancel the route off. 
Down it goes, very straightforward. Pushing menu again gets us back to this main option. Now, one other thing, if we push the nav button, so we can either go home and go to navigation menu, or we push the nav button, and that brings up some other navigation settings. So we can search for an address, we can go to our point of interest icons, look at previous destinations. So that Tim Hortons that I found, we can delete as well if we want to. We've got our destinations, frequently visited addresses, etc. We've got our saved places, key dealers. If we had an active route, we could cancel it. We could look at the route overview, etc. We could look at traffic. Along the very bottom, we can also set up different favorite locations. So if you tend to go to the same spots over and over again, we could easily set these things up as necessary. Moving back home, we've got some options for Turn our phone. Oh, I guess we're adding in a phone now. So next up, let's hop in and let's add a phone into the vehicle. Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen. Okay, so what we're doing is we're hopping into our Bluetooth and you can see vehicle name there. So we're just going to connect. Pins match up. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no for now. So you can see there, I'm fully connected. So we can look at that. We've got my dial pad as well. Along the very bottom. Download was unsuccessful. Oh, of Please course. Check the mobile phone. So the reason why it said that is because I literally suggested or selected no when it was connecting through my phone there. So just don't worry if you do want to have those things on there, you could just select and say yes as you're setting up. But you can see along the very bottom, we've got the phone name, how much signal we have and our current battery life. And then we can also push this in order to get our split screen back again. So if you want that as an option, we've got that. Text messaging, etc. I did say no, that's why it's just not connecting there. But we've got our phone name. We can push this as well you if you wanted to dial that way. And because we're connected, we can also do a longer press and hold on the steering wheel in order to activate our Siri Assistant. So it is really cool that we've got that option. Now, because we're connected over our phone, if we go into our media, so you can see there that we've got our podcast that's currently playing, but if we had other audio, so we could list out other things. So if we had a library of different songs and things like that, so for music, podcasts, etc., it would show there. Or we go back home and you can see that we've got our phone that we can hop back into. Back home, we can go into phone projection. And as of right now, we're not connected to either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So let's connect to Apple CarPlay. One thing to note is that inside of the Telluride, we are going to be USB connection. So just in our center stack there, we've got a USB port we're gonna be connecting to. Opposite end of the cable. We're just plugging ourselves in. Perfect, do we wanna allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we wanna make sure we do that. And we're connected. Okay, we can launch into CarPlay, look at this. Beautiful. Oh, this looks nice. So this, this technically is gonna be the generic home screen that we're looking at. We can see our podcasts. We've got our map that's currently active. We've got our calendar on top of that. Shooting across phone, we've got Apple Maps. We've got Google Maps and we've got Waze. And we can, ooh, we can use all of these right through the middle screen. Now one thing, no pinch to zoom on any of the maps. We would have these little arrows that we can press in order to move in and out this way instead. And then just press done. And then one other thing that you might have noticed there, so this map application is going to default to whatever was open last. So if you wanted to search for addresses, you can do that. We can look at different route options, map colors, and things like that. And this is through Google Maps. So they all work roughly the same way, but we've got so many options available here. One cool one is that on our phone, if we go through to our general settings, CarPlay, we've got the vehicle there, we can forget it or we can customize it. So if you have a tendency to maybe listen to your podcast more, we just do a press and hold, boop, press and hold, and we can drag that to the top. We can delete certain things there as well. Shows it at the bottom of the screen, or we just reset in order to bring it back to the factory default instead. So very straightforward there that we've got that flexibility. And then if we want to, we can press the setup button along the very bottom in order to go back to the home screen here. We go back home, we've got Apple CarPlay, etc. So very straightforward. And then we just disconnect and you can see there that we've got phone projection. And then we can't press phone projection again because we're not connected. We can press phone again and it's currently connected. So once we disconnect, automatically it's gonna connect that way instead. So it is very straightforward in order to be able to set these up. If we go into our setup, 
we've got a series of other options. So if we look at device connections, we've got a series of other things. So I just set this iPhone up and you can see there we've got two different icons. That means that we're connected for both phone calls as well as for audio. One cool thing is that we can have multiple phones connected and one of the phones connected for audio, the other one connected strictly for our phone, or we can have our phone not connected whatsoever. So it is really useful that we've got that available there as an option. I'll show you what it looks like when we have the second phone connected, but we've got our Bluetooth prompts there as well. We've got our Bluetooth system information. So if you want to change the vehicle name to something different, like Bob's Ride, we can do that and change the pass key out to something a little bit more challenging than 0000 is definitely a good thing. Our phone projection settings, we've also got split screen. So I'll show you what that looks like quickly. So we're going to go split screen here. Not going to go split screen Android Auto. I want to show you what that looks like in a second. But we go back home, plug back in, and it'll take a second. CarPlay, and you can see there we are split screen instead. We can go split screen to go for our maps if we wanted to. We can go up and down this way if we wanted to go between different sub screens as well. So our passenger, passenger talk, compass, and a few other options there. So it is nice that we've got that as an option. And then just set up in order to go back home again. And then if we want to, disconnect, and you're set to go. And that's how you set up an iPhone and use Apple CarPlay inside of the Telluride. Next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. Now, if we go into phone, we currently do have the iPhone set up right now. So in order to be able to swap the phones out, all we're gonna do, we've got this, we can turn the display off, we can download, change device, etc. So we're just gonna go change device and we're gonna jump into our settings now. Device connections, which we could also technically, so easier way to get to that screen would have been go set up, device connections, device connections and we've got our iphone that's currently connected so let's go ahead and add a new one on from your device in order to search on your device select the name that matches vehicle name on the screen hey and same idea we're just going to connect to kia there passcodes match up and we're connected so you can see there we've got both devices connected now and i did mention we can if we want to have audio on one we can have our phone on the other we can have our phone on both of them if we wanted to instead, or one, or sorry, one of them or the other. So we've got that flexibility, which is great. And one cool thing, we can set who's got connection priority. So if you've got two, P, uh, two phones that are connected to the vehicle, it's when both of them are in, who's Before gonna be, download is start. <laughs> it's who do we wanna be connected to first? So we've got that flexibility. We could easily delete devices if we wanted to, but I love that we've got this flexibility. So we can have one for download audio. Was we can have one for audio, we can have one for phone as well. I just think that's brilliant. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, in order to set up Android Auto, we're going through USB again. So we're taking our USB power po or plug down below and we're just gonna plug ourselves in. Let's go home for a second here and it's gonna take a sec. Okay, let's go through. Android Auto is connected. So fully connected there, as you saw, very straightforward. Now, one interesting thing, so this is the new, I guess, full screen look for Android Auto. So not true full screen because we can't get the map all the way across the screen. This is pretty much as good as it's gonna get right now. So we've got our podcast or our audio along the right hand side. We do have Google Maps at least though, which is nice and pinch to zoom available on the Android Auto side of things, which is kind of cool. Along the very bottom, we've got this, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things with the options, so root options and things like that. We could, along the side, very top, is going to bring us back to our home screen here. So you can see there we've got Google Maps. This phone technically does have Waze installed. It's just not showing there available as an option. We can jump into our podcast there. We can press this in order to have recommendations for music if we had any notifications, and then we've also got our Google Assistant. So we can push there, we can use our phone to activate it, or we can press and hold the button on the steering wheel in order to be able to activate it that way instead. So it is nice we've got that available as an option. Then like what we saw on the iPhone side, we press the setup button in order to move back here. We go into our device connections and we've got all those options, or we go home, we can launch back into Android Auto there again, or just disconnect in order to be able to disconnect Android Auto 
and then we can hop back into our phone and now because we've got two devices connected we can easily device swap this way instead so it is cool that we've got that available as an option and as you saw there setting up an android and an iphone very straightforward so that's the basics of setting up a phone and both phones are connected right now so if we go into our setup we can go device connections device connections and we've got both devices there we could delete devices very simply so what we do select whichever ones delete yes and as you can see there both phones are deleted now moving back home we've got voice memo which means that we can record a memo directly to the vehicle we've got some climate control settings here as well so we can lock out the rear climate controls so if people in the back are fighting we could technically lock them out we can also so as you can see there it's actually kind of neat because we turn our system on we can see what's going on there we do have dual zone climate control air conditioning we can have it automatically determine what's going on with our temperature we can turn it off or do we want it going to our windshield face feet some sort of frankenstein combination we can adjust our fan speed right from the inside here as well if we want to and then even as we adjust it through you can see it kind of adjusting on the fly there too and then we can also sync up so it's different on the driver than it is on the passenger side so if we hit sync it's going to default it to whatever the driver's side is along the side we can also shoot it out in order to adjust what's going on with our rear climate back there too We've also got our rear warmer, heat ventilation, etc. So we do have the flexibility of turning on the heated ventilated second row seats if, you, if your vehicle has that available as an option. So we can do it right from the middle here, which is fantastic, or we can just jump right back into our climate control settings there instead. See that, well, let's turn that off. And going back home, we've got our valet mode. Passenger talk means that we're talking to people in the back row. So what it's going to do is use the microphones inside of the front end here in order for us to easily communicate with people that are in the second and third row. Quiet mode means that it's going to lower all of the different all the volume inside the vehicle. So if you've got sleeping kids, etc., we could press here in order to jump right into rear climate as well so we can get to it here or there. We've got our HD radio. We can jump into our generic setup and like there are so many different options that are available here but driving assistance we've got our different convenience settings here so highway drive assist and lane change assist etc so what this is going to do with this advanced system is if it recognizes what's going on around you it can automatically change lanes for you as necessary it can automatically adjust your speed based off of how fast the road speed is based off of your location We've got our smart cruise control system there as well. So we can adjust some of these things right through the cluster. We can also do some of these ones, well, the majority of them here. So how far or close do we want to be away from the vehicle in front of us? Our acceleration and reaction for the vehicle as well. And we've got a series of other things that we can disconnect there. So if we don't want to use the highway drive assist and all of these different options, we could technically turn them off if we wanted to. We've got our speed limit warning. So if we're going a little bit too fast, it's going to let us know. We can get a warning, nothing happens, or speed limit assist means it's automatically going to adjust the speed based off of the speed recognition. We've got our driver attention warning. So if the vehicle in front of us starts to drive away, it's going to let us know that the vehicle has taken off. It's kind of neat. Forward safety, if it recognizes a potential collision, it's going to automatically brake for us cross traffic alert for the front end so if it recognizes a potential obstacle in front of us or collision in front of us it's going to let us know same idea with the side our lane safety we've got our blind spot that's one of the big ones so we've got our blind spot that's going to highlight orange in our side view mirrors letting us know if somebody's entered the blind spot we've got our blind view monitor so you can see it kind of showing there on the screen so it's going to let us know what's going on in our side view mirrors there not available across the board, but it is available there as an option. Parking safety, we've got our camera settings, so some basic options there. We've got our surround view monitor, and our surround view monitor is this guy. But I mean, look at how neat that is. <laughs> I love it. I love that we've got that available as an option inside of this thing. So we could turn this thing off if we want to. We've got our all sorts of other options park warnings so as we get closer to obstacles etc do we want these thing beeping at us as we go we've got rear safety so as we're backing up if we're coming closer to an obstacle do we want that showing yes no cross traffic alert so if somebody's coming perpendicular from either the left or the right side it's going to let us know of a potential collision that's happening there 
different options for our head-up display. So we can easily enable or disable this. And display controls, so we've got options there. So do we want to sync it to our seat position? We can automatically have this thing rotate out. We can also adjust the brightness. We've got content selection, so what information do we want showing in our head-up display? Moving into our cluster, series of other things so we can adjust what's going on with the brightness of the screen. We could also, this one's a cool one, We've also got our blue light filter, so that's automatically going to adjust what's going on with the warmth of the screen to make it easier on our eyes. We can have it automatically set up or come on automatically at a scheduled time. So very, very useful for driving later on at night. And then we've also got some base displays for our camera there too. Moving back, we've got our service interval. We can reset our fuel economy. We've got different content selection for the vehicle. So do we want different things showing up in the screen? Yes, no. Moving back, and that's going to be in for the cluster screen. Some different options for climate control. Our seats. Do we want to have our... Oh, this is so cool. We've got our link for auto adjustment there as well, so it can automatically turn on our heated, ventilated seats, etc., based off of what the rest of the vehicle is doing. It's kind of neat. So if you've got the air conditioning going, it can automatically turn on our ventilated seats. Easy access, what that's going to do is automatically adjust the seat so it's going to lower and back it up so that you can get in and out of the seat a little bit easier, or we can not have that happen. We've also got lumbar stabilization. Moving back, some different options for our lights. Do we want to adjust what's going on with our ambient light? We've got our turn signal, so by default it's going to be three, but we can have it one, three, five, or seven. Do we want to have all of our welcome lights there, our headlights? So when we go to lock the vehicle, is there a delay, yes or no? And then our high beam assist. So if our high beams are on and the vehicle recognizes somebody in front of us, it's automatically going to dim them for us. Different options for our door. Do we want to have the vehicle automatically lock when we shift or when we hit speed? Do we want it to unlock when we park, turn the vehicle off, or do we never want it to auto unlock? Do we want to have our power lift gate enabled, disabled? Do we want to adjust the speed? the height as well so how high do we want this thing opening do we want to be able to select it ourselves we've got our smart lift gate down below and that gives us the flexibility of being able to use the key fob in order to open up the lift gate so let's hop outside i'll show you how that works so the idea behind the smart lift gate is kind of neat so we lock the vehicle we do technically have to walk away for a few seconds there and then as long as we've got the key fob on us so you've got a bag full of groceries kids whatever the case may be this is cool. Oh. <laughs> Automatic. It is really neat that's available as an option. And one even cooler thing is that if we walk away and the car doesn't recognize the fob anymore, it's also going to shut that lift gate door for us too. It's really cool. Watch this. Look at it go. Look at it go. I love that we've got that available there as an option. So that is really cool. We've got our liftgate auto close as well. So if the key is no longer nearby, it's automatically going to close the, uh, the liftgate for us. That is really cool. We've also got our remote window control so we can easily use the fob in order to be able to roll some of the windows down. Let's hop outside and I'll show you how that process works. So if we wanted to roll the windows down using the fob, we can do that. So we're going to press the unlock button twice and hold it on the second button press. So we're going to go one, two, and hold. We can also unrelease it, and that's going to stop it part way. And then if we do a press and hold again, back down it goes. So it is a very useful setting. And then moving back, We've got digital key, and this is a really, really neat one. So we can use our smart, uh, smartphone as a key, and that's just using the Kia app on our phone. And we've also got some basic convenient settings. So rear occupant alert is going to show us a little message right in the screen off to the left-hand side there, letting us know to check the back seats. We've got our wireless charge pad and then our auto wiper when we're in reverse. So if we've got our front windshield wipers going and we go to put the vehicle in reverse, it's automatically going to turn on our rear wipers for us. Tons of options. We've got some different navigation settings. So do we want to change different things out? For our guidance, do we want to have different detailed guidance options? Do we want to avoid certain things on our route? On our route sorry, so things like ferries, toll roads, etc. What type of navigation do we want? For border crossing, do we want that information? 
our previous destinations. Do we want to save them? Yes or no. If we hit no, it'll automatically delete them when we turn the vehicle off. Some different options for the map itself. So do we want to change out the font size, the color, our symbol, so our little like Star Trek-y symbol? Do we want to adjust out what color we've got there? And then some different navigation features as well. Next up, moving into our sound, series of other ones. So we've got our startup volume limiter, which means that if we have the volume cranked and we go to turn the vehicle on, it's not going to crank it. So it's essentially going to limit it at a certain point. Position, so do we want to adjust what's going on with the position of the sound? So where do we want it focusing? Do we also want to adjust the treble mid-ranger bass? Something like that is typically pretty good. We've got our guidance system there as well. So what kind of alerts do we want for our sound for the different guidance options? Do we want to have different guidance volumes for all sorts of things? So we can literally adjust out every individual option there. We've got our radio noise down there as well, so we can adjust that as necessary. Device connections we've already seen. We've already seen user profiles. We've got our voice recognition. So what that means is we won't get as many prompts. So if we press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, when we get into that advanced mode, we just won't get as many notifications. And I mean, as you saw there, if you're not sure what you can do with this thing, we just hit commands and it shows us everything that we're able to do. Really useful. I honestly, I really recommend getting to know that command system because once you get the hang of it, it is really, really neat. We've got some different options for our screen layout. So we can link it to our drive mode, and that's for the cluster screen itself. We can also switch it out to some different looks if we'd like. We've got some options for screen saver, so if the display's off, there's nothing there. Or we can change it to either an analog or a digital clock instead. So we turn off, and we've got our date and time. Some different options for split screen. So when we are on split screen, what information do we want showing up there? We've got three individual buttons. So we've got one right down here, and then we've got two of them on the steering wheel. So we've got our custom button, and then we've also got our custom steering wheel buttons as well. And it's what do we want these things to do when they're pressed? So we've got a series of different options that are available there. When we do things, even like adjusting the steering wheel button up and down, do we want it to change the presets or the station? That's actually the preset is probably a useful one. I'll show you how to do that in a second. We get into our volume rockers, etc. What do we want that to do? We've got Kia Connect, and then a series of different general settings. So we've got our firmware, software, system information. We've got our date and time. It's setting it automatically. That's why things are grayed out. But if we deselect, we can adjust that manually. Do we want 12 or 24 hour mode? And then automatically, and then do we want it adjusting for daylight savings time? Yes, no. We've got our language settings, so do we want English, French, Spanish, or Korean? Different keyboard options, and then our measurement units as well. So that one's useful. Do we want it in either kilometers or miles, Celsius, Fahrenheit, etc.? So we've got all options. So one cool thing is that these are also dynamic, so if we change it out to miles, you can see that it automatically adjusts it there as well. And that's the basics of setup. And perfect. Next up, we've got our radio. So we can press radio there or the radio button right down in the middle, and that's going to pop us up to this screen here instead. We can push this to change between AM, FM, Sirius XM. So we can do that. We can easily add in a station as well. So if we change to a station this way, we could add station, and that's going to remember the station for us. If we hit station list, those are all of the available stations. Oh, wait for that volume to go away all of our stations that are available based off of our current location. And that's the same for AM, FM, Sirius XM, and for all of our different presets. So if you're new to an area, you're not sure what stations you can listen to, you can easily jump to this and adjust out. You can see there. Searching, searching, searching. There we go. So all of our different stations. And then we can just go to presets in order to see all of our presets. We can easily reorder them. So just a drag and drop, or we can delete them. So if there are certain presets you don't like, all we're going to do is hit that, delete, and you're set to go. And let's go to one of these stations. You can see there we can adjust this way as well if we want to. And then we've also got the flexibility of, so we hit media, our radio, sorry, in order to be able to change out to our different modes that way. Along the very top, 
We can turn the display off, enter a station manually this way if we want to. Oh, uh, chaos, chaos. All right, and from there, press the little button. We can tune to our AM manually. We can also delete presets a few different ways there too. So pretty straightforward. We've got some other options very along the very top. So quantum logic, HD radio. We can do a split screen there instead if we wanted to. So, so many options. Push this little guy along the very top. It is kind of nice that we've got that flexibility, but nice, nice, straightforward. Now, if we go to, so we're in Sirius XM. So let's actually do something. Let's go here and we're going to go to AM and it's going to just easily adjust us out this way. If we jump into media, Again, you can see we've got a series of other things like sounds of nature. So if you're a bigger fan of like these ambient noises, we can easily switch out that way or we hit media again in order to be able to get into any of these other media options. Moving back home, we've got our media, key connect, we've got notifications, and then we can also get into our user manual. So I know a lot of information, but that's everything you need to know about the media screen inside of the Kia Telluride.